Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Morehouse, and I work at Google on the Dynamic Tools team. Last year, I presented to you GWP ASAN, which is our memory error detector for production. This year, I'd like to present GWP TSAN, which is an extension of GWP ASAN that adds data race detection. GWP TSAN is a recursive acronym. It stands for GWP TSAN will provide thread sanity. More specifically, it's a probabilistic data race detector that we're working on built on top of GWP ASAN. Now, GWP ASAN integrates with whatever memory allocator you use. You simply uh, splice a tiny fraction of allocations to GWP ASAN. And by adjusting this sampling rate, you can achieve as low overhead as you want. Allocations sent to GWP ASAN get buffer overflow and use after free detection. GWP ASAN does this using guard pages and by unprotecting freed memory. But it does not detect any data races. For that, we need a new mechanism. GWP TSAN uses some ideas from Microsoft Data Collider to achieve this. Data Collider works by setting a breakpoint on a random memory access. Then when that breakpoint fires, it removes the breakpoint and sets a watch point on the memory that was accessed. In this case, a watch point is set on RACI counter. It then waits. And if while that thread is waiting, another thread triggers a watch point, it knows that a data race has occurred and it will report it. If a watch point does not fire while we're waiting, uh, it simply removes the watch point and continues execution as usual. So GWP TSAN uses this idea from Data Collider to add data race detection to GWP ASAN. It periodically sets watch points on GWP ASAN allocations, and then when it detects that concurrent accesses to the same address have occurred, with at least one being a write and at least one being non-atomic, it reports a data race. Now, a key difference between GWP TSAN and Data Collider is the mechanisms used for setting watch points. Data Collider uses debug registers for this. This allows them to trap on accesses to specific addresses. However, there's only four debug registers, which severely limits the number of watch points you can set. It also will conflict with any tools that use debug registers for tracing or other things. So for this reason, GWP TSAN uses mProtect, ProtNone, and a SegFault handler to do watch points instead. This does have the unfortunate side effect that it will trap on any access within the same memory page. So even if you have two threads accessing different addresses, and there would never be a data race in this case, you'll still hit watch points from both. But the upside is you get unlimited watch points, and there's potential use of Intel P keys to reduce the number of unnecessary traps. Now we've hit a couple of challenges while implementing GWP TSAN. The first one we've run into is dealing with atomic accesses. We don't want to report a race if, if only atomic accesses are involved in the race, because it's not really a race. But how do we tell if an access is atomic at runtime? Our current solution for this is to embed a table of atomic access instruction addresses in the binary itself. Then at program startup, we can read the table into memory and use it to check if any access is actually atomic or not. The other issue we've run into is dealing with system calls. Since we use protonent memory as our watch pointing mechanism, whenever we pass watch pointed memory to a system call, it will fail with eFault. Our current solution for this is to intercept syscall wrappers and to remove watch points before doing the syscall itself. This is straightforward to do, but it does involve a lot of work to find out which syscalls we actually need to intercept. So thank you for attending my talk. I'm happy to answer any questions you have, and I also would be interested in any feedback you have on our approach. Um, thank you again.